So here I have this recording. <laughs> Actually, it's me playing in a uh, terrace and it was in Kazakhstan, but I remember the moment and it was, it was a really super touching moment. So anyways... Like, it goes like mono and stereo, I like it, that it shifts, that's cool. I think really rhythm is something that drives my composition for sure a lot and exploring arrangements and exploring um, ways of making grooves. I like trying to find an element that keeps the dancer, I would say a dancer in the club setting, active into moving, but also confusing the dancer into, oh shit, this is not 4-4, four, four. like where am I supposed to put my foot on the floor, I'm a bit confused into that, but still, oh, I'm, I want to move, you know, and I, I quite like that a lot. I was actually touring with my mum, she's a musician. Let's say I learned how to use a mixer when I was doing the sound for some of her shows. The main tool for making music is processing audio. I rarely work with MIDI, actually. And it's always, that's why I use the word sound design, or if I find a tune interesting, I'll be like, oh, that's sound designy. I don't know if it exists as a word, but it's, that's, oh, it's like, oh, what is this? And then comes this crazy sound that has nothing to do with the next one. It's ear unreal, but oh, actually it was based on the field recording. And, and then it, it has this end and release that like shifts and then goes into under the water into this and stuff. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But yeah, can you dance on that? Let's try and find a way to dance on this. I use different samplers, um, so that's software, and um, I mess around with pitch a lot, really a lot, so I do that also on my DJ set, <laughs> actually. Um, so I think that's probably a way of torturing the audio and um, extracting something fun to work with. No, actually, I don't download samples from other people. <laughs> Maybe I should, but there's just so much out there to just work with that I don't see the need in digging further. For my productions, I, I, I record whatever stuff I have. I have got so much, like, you know, ice and uh, uh, banging on whatever metal thing exists. And uh, I haven't done that in a while, actually, but there's, you know, super long tubes that could create a really nice uh, echo, uh, spiral echo and stuff. So. Yeah, there's a lot of also natural effects that I like to emphasize as well when I get and I put them in Ableton. The liminal space I find always interesting because it can be absurd and it's also um, about like listening and observing but also reproducing. You can reproduce something with another technique and then confuse the listener or the viewer. Uh, into what it, what it, what it is, and what it's not, and I think it's not only about like the textures that exist. Like if you, I mean, if you're going into the field recording very close of some ice, like it just sounds really spooky. The the sounds that there are. It's not only like actually a rhythm with a clear uh, beat, but also some textures would have a, a dynamic range that you could extract, like the higher dynamics or the lower dynamics, or you could also 
um, filter it into revealing like the exact uh, um, taste that you like from it, and uh, and from then on. I like creating a rhythm on, on that basis, so it could be, because I could say, oh yeah, uh, you can just tap on things yourself, and that's like actually playing percussions, with, which I do, like there's some rhythms like that with, where it's me actually banging on some stuff and then changing the rhythm again, but there's also some sounds that are not rhythmical that can just become a rhythm too. Let's say I know there's some producers that would like use more algorithmics uh, in their compositions and then create like polyrhythms in that way, uh, which I find is super sick and like wow I'm really impressed by how that works but I need to tap it, I need to tap it in and then feel it and then okay now I would like to add that so then I'm gonna add that and tap it in and I just use the push for that. So it's a different it's a different approach, which you know can sound in the end the same. But yeah, I would try to put in some LFOs to change, to make some changes, but also just record with my pedals live, and then it will have the changes like that. So it's it's always this thing of the computer can make it sound more organic, more and more these days. I think with software, which is really cool but I just like doing it as well, even if it will take more time editing. I got into that um, from a book that I found in the boxes that belong to my grandmother and she's actually a very important character for me because uh, she, she is or she was a, an artist and engraver. She had just loads of interesting books and one of them is about the uh, Inuit people. Um, which I thought was really fascinating and it was somehow, yeah, kind of like a storytelling from her, let's say, that's how it started. But then I got more focused on the, on the string figures uh, exactly. The string figures was really about this appreciation of, of, uh, of folk, but also combining with modern elements, but in a respectful way, you know. We met uh, three years ago at a female pressure event, actually, yeah. uh, during Able to Loop. And, uh, I was screened then. Yeah, yeah, I was looking for uh, someone to collaborate with on an audiovisual album, and uh, Ali started asking questions about <laughs> it. It was an open call, and uh, there were already a few people that applied and stuff, but then Ali just kept on asking the right questions, and it just flew into yeah. continuing. Yeah, so she indeed was looking for a director or like video artist, I guess, yeah. to work with her at the audiovisual album or some of the videos then, but it clicked so well together then we did like seven. Actually, All of together. them, yeah. All of them. Uh, so that was the first project. She, you know, like uh, she, she came to me, like she had like a pretty clear proposal with a lot of like visual references, so that was like very inspiring also for me. I think that's also like why it went as it went in a way. Yeah, we continued it actually as a yeah. live show, and uh, since she's as well a, a D, uh, yeah. VJ, sorry, not DJ, <laughs> kind of the same. Yeah. Well, then we continued playing live, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's cool to 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 play this thing we've been working on two years. Oh yeah, everywhere very we can, satisfying. So. The name obviously is from String Figures, SFX, so it's yeah, String Figures Unknown, but it's also yeah, sound things. effects, uh, special effects, uh, it can mean many, many, many things. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, mm. So we just launched this, so we can't say this is what we are exactly, but we've got a clear vision of what we want to do, which is 
mainly connecting different disciplines, collaborating with even more people, uh, releasing objects or uh, experiences, making it a space open for experimentation as well and uh, not being stuck into some structure that we, we don't feel comfortable or in, fit in or feel free. I think, yeah. yeah, it comes also a lot out of like maybe, you know, this need of like, or this feeling of like not really fitting into one category, you know, and yeah. like because we like to stretch borders and try things and uh, mix disciplines and so on, I think probably that's also kind of, so yeah. I think platform is indeed like a word that we have been yeah, yeah. thinking about. I'm not even sure the label like, you know, describes what it is. It's kind mm. of also a hybrid. And it's also the idea of um, maybe work in progress could be a word, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's kind of what you do during residencies, for instance. Like, we would also love to gather people uh, and exchange ideas, etc. Always about connecting, like, that's mm -hmm. really our thing, like, basically. Yeah. Exquisite corpse. Um, well, that obviously refers to the surrealists game. It's kind of about the creative process <coughs> of like making an artwork or like making something together by getting hints from the person that's been working at the, the basically like sequence before you and then giving hints to the person who's gonna like work at whatever comes later mm -hmm. and then but of course because you don't know what has like the total that, that has been done before it's a bit of a blind date, let's say, let's say, and uh, that is what we like about it. Mm. Like the idea of really like going super experimental, trying things, mm. um, less focus on like uh, on the actual final output itself, mm. but rather like being inspired by like these inputs that you get from the other artists. Mm. And of course, we are connecting people mm. because the idea is indeed a bit like connecting sound artists, musicians with like video artists, mm. visuals, DJ, like DJ generative, like also different types of like um, different ways of making video content for instance. You would have sound artists and visual artists that would produce like one to three minutes uh, content and uh, then uh, provide a sample or uh, an idea or inspiration, uh, etc., to the next uh, artist. And so the next artist wouldn't have any idea of what happened before but and so forth. But little by little, exactly, yeah. it will become a, n a narrative. Just the idea in general is indeed overlaying sound and visuals, mm. maybe even like other disciplines actually later. We like this crisscrossing mm. thing. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. sound artists giving hints to the visual, you know, and like visuals to the sound artist yeah. that way or in parallel. I think there is many modes um, and it's a very inspiring kind of like project. There is like connections within the concept and visual representation yeah. and the sound that maybe like, you know, something triggers yeah. something else. Like, but yeah, rather than a prepared yeah. little box that you would yeah. like offer the people always the same. Yeah, because like for instance for the for the for the A V show we do like basically the content was made especially. So I think like usually we get the feedback that it's like wow it really fits well together. Like what I was explaining about the label, like the different mm -hmm. ideas that yeah. we have are always like kind of open. That That's where we really mm -hmm. match actually. Flexible mm -hmm. and open to new input and open to, to evolve with new input and as we play live then yeah. we're open to evolve that etc. This new record is really much more about digging fucked up rhythms, if I could say, and, and, and in that way I think the light can really accompany super well and yeah. also I think we could play in a dark club. I think the AV show, when I play live on my own and uh, when I DJ, Initially was much more separated, but now it's really becoming uh, very much uh, not the same, but it's definitely my taste or my output. Like DJing, I find this incredibly fun and it also inspires me as a producer to, to DJ and to be like, oh wow, I can mix that and that and that. And I try to mix as much. I mean, I try to have 
you know, three or four CDJs and some pedals as well. To, so in the end, like the setup is not so far either as um, my live set. So it kind of crosses over for sure. Um, and it also yeah, gives me input as a live performer and, and what could be fun to do on the next show, etc. So yeah, I mean, also the lives, like they always evolve and whatever new thing I've been working on, I would just incorporate it and uh, mess around with it. And when I will mess around with it live this time, if it works, doesn't work, then I might try to do it again the next time or not. It's not fixed, like, that's boring. <laughs> it depends. It depends. Club it really can depends. be a good, a good place yeah. for audiovisual lives. Yeah. It de really depends. It depends even on the yeah. type of night, on the, on the type of audience, uh, on the general lineup, I think, because yeah. it is, of course, it has to do also with what happened before and what's going to happen after. Yeah, we do play together, but I also play quite a lot alone and yeah. it depends on the space obviously and sometimes it's just nice to have dark and some Absolutely. light and mm -hmm. just focus on, on dancing and yeah it can be quite uh, yeah attra attractive to just stare at the visuals but mm -hmm. usually people are actually dancing like when we were playing the last time yeah. so we're just dancing anyway so I mean, I guess I'm it's also cool. trying a bit not to... We don't like if they're sitting down, actually. Oh, no. Because it could be like, there, oh, now it's sitting, performance no. and... Sitting is a bit too serious. No. The next watching. one we're working on now mm. is uh, is with lights, actually. So yeah. we're working on a, on a video for for, for for this album, States of Fuse. It's going to be a music video coming out after the release of the album. All these talks uh, about the uh, conceptronica and all this, you know, I kind of obviously this is pretty much uh, what a lot of I don't know avant-garde or whatever producers are, are are into or artists. But I think it's fucking great because it's just an artist in the end. So whatever you want to express, then then just do it. But then what is the um, the, how the industry will work like that, that's something I think we should really like talk more about as yeah, well, yeah, you know, and exactly. I think we'd be up for, for, for setting up some sort of exchange about that also with oh, the God, label, yeah. you know, to, to, to exchange hard. about how, how, what model we could have, because yeah. there's no, it's, it's, it's actually cutting all of the models and it's great, but yeah, how can you can you make that happen with quality and uh, people getting paid, you know, so... I mean, most of the requests that I get from musicians, yeah. it's actually musicians really willing to push that and doing yeah. audiovisual and taking money out of their pocket. Yeah. Because it's not, there is no budget actually for that, yeah. I understand, like, costs are a lot, yeah. but still, that I think in a way the, the reason why we're getting all these lighting shows is also yeah. because of that. Because venues for venues it's much easier to get like to rent few lights mm. than to actually set up a projector. And you don't need to have all the video content ready or whatever it is. But I think maybe the lighting kind of focus that I mean in past years has gone like pretty crazy with like huge installations mm. is a bit of a an answer to like that issue. Like audiovisual yeah. heart. Yeah, it's really questioning like yeah. the spaces where you can actually yeah. perform and like a uh, club has usually shitty equipment for whatever is not, I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. if you don't have a, they probably have a pioneer and mixer and that's it anyways. A beamer, but, a projector. But yeah, for the rest, so it's, it's trying to push the borders of all that, but also like the contemporary arts world, like it's such a totally different mm. world and already just like animation and sound is already totally different. So yeah. how to make more links, etc. But I think, I mean, the music yeah. industry can benefit <laughs> of like, you know, from the, all these um, interconnections. Yeah. I think it's a good investment, just saying.